figure it out usually, but since I thought of it, I'd tell you. <laughs> there you go. Make Elena's night. You know she says hip hop, hip hop when she puts her little stethoscope on the heart. That's what she thinks hearts say.
Well, good evening and welcome to Christmas Eve worship with First Baptist Church of Martinsville. We are delighted to have you joining with us tonight. It is great to see your faces for those of you who can be here in person. And we are grateful also for the technology to reach all of you who cannot join us in person today. Tonight is a celebration. It is a time of communion. It is a season of light. You are always welcome among us, especially if you're our guest this evening. The people of First Baptist are always seeking to follow Jesus, the one born this night among us, and the one who changes us all to be better people each and every day of the year. We welcome all who would be called Christ's disciples alongside us. If you have children here this evening and have not already received one, we have welcome bags for our kids to keep little fingers busy this evening as this is a family-friendly service. If you don't have one, our children's minister, Ashley, will be glad to grab one for you and deliver it to you. Also, if you have not received a prepackaged communion, we can provide that as well for later in the service. Each one of you should have your own candle for later in the service. We will share the light of Christ together. And for little hands, we have flameless candles as well. This service is one that is full of beauty and wonder. Tonight, we celebrate a birthday, but not just any birthday. It's one that brought heaven to earth in the cries of a newborn baby. It's a birthday celebration that throws a party in a cattle stall and reminds us that no matter where we are, we are special to God. For God chose to be one of us on that night so many years ago. This night, no one is a stranger. All of us are joined together as family through the miracle of the birth of that baby. So let us share in our joy and excitement at being present with God who reaches down this night to touch the earth with his presence. I urge you tonight to give yourself fully to these moments of shared worship and shared communion. Now if you'll join me in your worship bulletin, we have a responsive call to worship. I'll read the regular prints, and you can respond as a congregation in the bold print. On this holiest of nights, we come joining the shepherds who are stunned by wonder. On this most silent night, we come our oaks and trees joining those of Mary and Joseph. On this night of carols and candlelights, we come our glad songs joining with the choirs of angels over us. Will you pray with me? O wondrous God of the stars, we come tonight with breathless wonder to see the babe who will change our lives. We hear the names Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, and we are in awe. You have touched the earth this night with your unconditional love. Touch us as well. Touch our hearts and minds and souls. May we never tire of this story. May we never take it for granted. Make this night magical in our hearts again. We ask this all in the name of that child who was born, who grew in wisdom and stature, who loved us deeply, and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our first carol this evening is number 171, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. You'll also find the words, uh, I believe, printed in your bulletin. Yes. Will you stand as you are able? on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconcile. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With the angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald sing glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold Him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead Thank you. Please be seated. Our Old Testament lesson this evening is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices and together they sing for joy. For in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. 
And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood up stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told about them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I invite any of the children to come and join me. I know we're switching it up on a different side today. Oh, I love it. Come on up. It, oh, I like it. I love it. Well, everybody, have a seat. Have a seat. I am so glad you're here. Do you want to sit right here, Adeline? Or do you want us to slide over so we'll all be in a line? Zoe, slide over just a little bit. There we go. James, come on over by me, and Adeline can sit by Elena. Perfect. Well, I am so glad you are here tonight. I know you just heard Mr. Will read the whole Christmas story. And I wanted to read this book with you that I love because it starts with, can you tell who that is on the cover? The, 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 shepherds. the shepherds, that's right. And it's called Nativity by Cynthia Rylance. So James, let me open our book here so I can show you all. So just like we heard Mr. Will says, or say, it says, And there were shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. See all the sheep. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. James, can you hold your magnifying glass for me? Thanks, bud. The angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings, which is a fancy word for news, of great joy. For unto you this day is born a Savior, and this shall be a sign to you. You will find the babe lying in a manger. Who is the baby in the manger? Do you know already? You, you know the story. Well, then suddenly there was, an, with the angel, a multitude. So a whole bunch of angels saying, glory to God. And on earth, peace, good will toward men. I know there's a bunch of sheep in it. And see, there go the shepherds. They're on their way. And the shepherds came into Bethlehem, and they found Mary with her husband Joseph and the baby that was lying in the manger. Mama, and look, they picked up a chicken along the way too right there. <laughs> Mama, look, that, that, that looks like it's painted. It does look like it's painted. So look, so there's the shepherds. 
And the shepherds made known to others the saying which was told to them about the child. And all that they heard, well, all they that heard this story wondered at those things which were told to them. So the shepherds ran back to tell everybody about this story and what had happened. There is. And it says, but Mary, so Jesus' mama, kept these things and pondered them in her heart. Because that's a lot to happen of have a new baby and then a bunch of shepherds and sheep show up. That's Jesus. Well, when the baby, who was called, what was his name again? Jesus. 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 When the babe, here, let me hold the book. That is everybody. That is everybody. But when Jesus became a man, he stood one day on a mountain before a great multitude of people. Look at all of those people. And Jesus said, blessed are the poor. For theirs is the kingdom of God. I don't know. Blessed are they that mourn, for they will be comforted. So even when we are sad, we will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I love it. Blessed are the pure in heart. Do you know where your heart is? Right here. Yeah, you know where your hearts are. For they shall see God. So friends, this beautiful book, I love that it tells us the beginning of Jesus' story with the shepherds but then gives us a little glimpse of who Jesus was going to be and that Jesus was going to be so different than anyone expected, that Jesus was preaching and telling people that the people that are sad, the people that don't have anything, they are the ones who are blessed. So Jesus always turns the story upside down which I'm sure by the end of the night, all of you might be upside down too. It's a very exciting night. Well, before we go, can we sing Away in a Manger together? Do you know Away in a Manger? No. No? Oh, dear. So if you don't know it, you'll catch on. You can sing along. And grown-ups, you are welcome to sing with us too. So let's get ready, friends, to sing together. You ready? Here we go. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The sound wonderful. Grown-ups, you sound wonderful too. Well, before we go, will you join me in an echo prayer, which means you echo what I say. So are you ready? Quiet your bodies as we talk to God. And here we go. Loving God. Loving God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Who shows us. Who shows us. How to live and love. How to live and love. Amen. 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 All right, friends, head back to your grown-ups and have a Merry Christmas. Our next carol this evening is number 170. It came upon the midnight clear. 
Please stand as you are able. Again, the words are printed in your bulletin or use the hymnal as you wish. seated. Well, this old and familiar story, this reading from Luke chapter 2 that we hear every year, perhaps multiple times during the Christmas season, reminds me a little bit of the packages I was wrapping yesterday in my mad dash to catch up so that we can deliver them to Elena's cousins tomorrow. And I imagine that this Luke 2 story is a little bit like those presents in that first, the box or the wrapping paper that's what makes up the story's characters, most of whom we know very well and may very well be on some of our Christmas wrapping paper this year. We know the setting in an ancient time where two young parents-to-be, Joseph and Mary, are leaving their hometown to head to the village of Bethlehem, which is Joseph's ancestral home, the city of David, for a census. We know about the birth of a little baby, a little baby who was laid into a feeding trough because there was nowhere else for the parents to stay. We know about those shepherds, too lowly and poor to even be counted, apparently, still at work watching their sheep by night startled by angels, messengers from God, who would give them that special message known in all of the Hebrew scriptures. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. We know about those angels, too, singing glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. We know about the shepherds running back to find the baby in a manger and then going out and telling everyone in town the story. And we know about Mary, the mother, sitting and pondering just after a rough night of laboring and birthing 
and pondering over what this bigger picture for the world means, holding space in her heart for the grandness of God's plan. All of these characters are familiar to us. We've heard them spoken of so often in our lives, we may even have parts of this story memorized. But what we might miss in the wrapping paper of the narrative is what's really in the box. What does this box hold for us? The Christmas story is made meaningful by each of these characters, but only because they serve to point to the gift inside. The gift of God's tangible presence in this world. God, who is love, decided in these moments in time through this group of people to bring heaven to earth in the form of a small baby of humble origins. That from all of these people saying yes to God's plans, we have the fulfillment of God's promises in Leviticus 26, where it reads, and I will walk among you and will be your God and you shall be my people. God chose to come and walk among us, now quite literally, and to live with us, to suffer alongside us, to offer salvation through his sacrifice. In these moments of the Christmas story, through these characters we know so well, time stands still and changes forever. New beginnings abound. A newborn king threatens earthly power in unusual ways. A baby boy will grow to teach us new ways to understand God's love and commandments. A silent night is interrupted by the light of our salvation coming to earth in a squalling newborn and a mother's labor. I read... Uh, another pastor, James Howell, who said about this baby, it's the incarnation. God became flesh. God came down. God is as close as my own heartbeat and the breath I just took. God understands us and redeems us from the inside out. This is why God's revealing of God's heart and mind came through an infant something we all once were, something that elicits tenderness even from the hardest among us. That is the only real and unique thing, I think, about our faith. But no one was quite expecting this, were they? No one expected it to happen in this way. Prophets had foretold many of the details of Jesus' birth, but no one quite saw the baby coming as he did. No one quite saw his unwed mother and her powerful song about the changes that her son would bring into this world. No one understood that the last and the least would be the bearers of this good news first. They had hope in a Messiah, a chosen one of God, but they didn't see or understand the wrapping paper it would come in, and thus they might have missed the even more powerful message of the good news or the gift inside. As one pastor put it, the grace of God sneaks into our world under the radar of our religious expectations in the person and life of Jesus. God's grace lifts up the lowly, the brokenhearted, the struggling. God's grace teaches the proud about humility. God's grace looks so different than a powerful and mighty army winning battles. No, it looks like a young mother birthing a baby and laying him in a manger. It looks like poor shepherds being visited by angels. 
And it looks like heaven choosing to come to earth in the unlikeliest of places. You and I get caught up in these days leading up to Christmas and making everything perfect. But so many things get in the way of that most years, don't they? And these days especially, we still face a pandemic and all it has wrought and all it still will. We never know exactly what to expect and it leaves us weary. We are tired. Sometimes our hopes are running low. The prospect of a merry Christmas seems a long way away for some of us. Or perhaps we think we're on the right track for everything to fall into line until someone comes with hard news. This has happened to many of you. Well, I have the virus. I can't make it. Or your mother has taken a turn for the worse. Or our flight got canceled. So many others. Things that get in the way of what we wanted, what we expected. But all of these things, like gathering at specific times or in specific ways, eating those specific foods, or wrapping all the presents just so, they aren't what makes Christmas Christmas. These are the trappings around the real gift, the good news that we have hope again in this Savior who inaugurated a very different kind of kingdom in this world. The good news that we don't have to fear, just as the angel said, for God has sent grace and love into our midst in the person of Jesus. The good news that no matter where we are, next to a feeding trough right after giving birth, or if we're too poor to count shepherds, or later in the story, even those well-to-do standing on the outside looking in magi coming from the east. God's story of entering our midst is for us all. And it's a story that can once again bring us peace in the midst of our violence and discord. Hope in the midst of our despair and our fear. Joy in the midst of our sadness and brokenness, and love, even when we feel unlovable. So when I begin to worry about what Christmas looks like this year, I'm reminded of Dietrich Bonhoeffer's amazing letter written while inside a Nazi concentration camp where he wrote, I think we're going to have an exceptionally good Christmas. I used to be very fond of thinking up and buying presents, but now that we have nothing to give, the gift God gave us in the birth of Christ will seem all the more glorious. The emptier our hands, the better we understand what Luther meant when he said, we're beggars, it's true. The poorer our quarters, the more clearly we perceive that our hearts should be Christ's home on earth. So this year, let's not just stand and stare at the packaging of the Christmas story that we already know so well. Instead, let's unwrap it in all of its glorious and good news. Let's look inside and see the promises of God. And let's let go of our need for perfection and our holidays and elsewhere in our lives. And instead, let Christ into our hearts to change us for the better. To change us into people who give generously as God gave to us when God chose to come and live among us. People who no longer feel the need to control the world and instead embrace God's grace to enter our lives in new ways. Then I think we'll finally get to the point of the story that God so loved this world, every single one of us, that wherever we find ourselves, God chose us to touch the world with heaven's light through a human body, through a baby boy. God chose us 
to send a savior on a holy night so long ago. Will you pray with me? Lord, in this holy season of prayer and song and laughter, we praise you for the great wonders that you have sent us, for a shining star and angel's songs, for an infant's cry in a lowly manger. We praise you for the word made flesh in a little child. We behold his glory and are bathed in its radiance. Be with us as we sing the ironies of Christmas, the incomprehensible, finally comprehended, that poetry made into fact, that helpless babe who cracks the world asunder. We all kneel before you, shepherds, innkeepers, wise men, Marys and Josephs. Help us to rise bigger than we are. Help us to say yes to your greater plans and help us to see the true gift within this story and let it change us forever. Amen.
just as we retell a familiar story of the birth of Jesus, we also gather around a familiar table this evening. Communion has the same root word as community. It's based in a common experience that we share together. Here we experience Christ's hope in our lives, and we share it together when we receive this bread and cup. And so tonight we will once again gather with our church family, with our extended families, to share this communal experience of God's love and Christ's sacrifice. Tonight I remind you that this table, this is not my table, it is not First Baptist's table. This is Christ's table. And all who believe in Jesus as Lord are welcome here. So I ask you now, gather your elements, whether the prepackaged elements we have here in the sanctuary or whatever you have there at home as you join us virtually. And let us remember together tonight the awe of God come to earth to rescue us from ourselves and our sin, and to love us beyond comprehension. And so let us remember together. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus gathered with his friends around a dinner table, and he took a simple loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, broken for you, each time you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. So friends, this is the bread of heaven. Take and eat. In the same way, Jesus took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Each time you drink of it, you remember the Lord's death until he comes again. Friends, this is the cup of salvation. Drink and remember. Thanks be to God and amen. During the season of Advent, we have been lighting a wreath of candles. For four weeks, we have focused on the attributes of the kingdom of God. Hope, peace, joy, and love. 
And tonight, as we celebrate Christ's birth, we light the Christ candle in the center. For in Christ, we find light and life. We find the courage to be like Christ, answering his call, following in his footsteps. So tonight, come to us, Lord Jesus. Be born in us this night, in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives. And may the light of Christ be kindled within each of us. Will you join me as we sing the response? You'll find it on the insert in your bulletin. Will you stand? Candles glowing, promise showing The great hope that calms our fear Darkness scatters where we shatters. Christ will always draw us near. Calms our sighing, hears our crying, helps our trying, love undying. Christ will always draw us near. Christ will always draw us near. Candles glowing, promise showing, holy peace so still and bright. New tomorrow, free from sorrow, living in Christ's holy light. Shining violence, loving neighbor, joy of silence, trust our Savior, living in Christ's holy light, living in Christ's holy light. Candles glowing, promise showing, joy that fills our very soul. Grace unbounding, hymns resounding, Christ restores and makes us whole. Mercy's gleaming, wonders beaming, justice streaming, Christ redeeming, Christ restores and makes us whole, Christ restores and makes us whole. Candles glowing, promise showing, love that makes the world anew. Shines in glory, tells the story, Christ's own love will see us through. With the outcast and on welcome, Christ is steadfast, bring us all home. Christ's own love will see us through. Christ's own love will see us through. Candles glowing, promise showing, Jesus born a baby small. Hosts rejoicing, shepherds voicing, praising Christ the Lord of all. God is with us, shout Hosanna, raise a chorus never. Praising Christ, the Lord of all. Praising Christ, the Lord of all. Please be seated. Well, this evening, each one of you has a candle. From the light of the Christ candle, we will share the light of the world with one another. As we light the candles of those in your own row, 
And if you're at the end of the row, turn around and share with the next row. And from here, my prayer is that we all live into this light in such a way that our witness to Christ's light and life will break any darkness in this world. Wherever we find ourselves, may we see Christ's light shining and forever be changed by it. Once the light has been passed through the sanctuary, we will sing together that familiar carol, Silent Night, Holy Night, and then we'll close with a benediction, after which you can use your cup to extinguish your candle. And
The story tells us that it's those who wait in the world's shadows that are the first to know of the Christ child, born into darkness and yet bringing great light. So leave here this night to be carriers of this rumor of peace and the truth of love into a world longing for light. Pray for the justice another is waiting for. Speak hope into the air another needs to breathe. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. God bless you all and Merry Christmas. Thank you.